The Chicago Bulls come out of the All-Star break with a tough matchup against the Brooklyn Nets, a team that just beat them not even two weeks ago. And so the Chicago Bulls are looking to rebound and really set the tone for the back half of the season. We're going to talk about that. While this last stretch of the season is going to be hugely telling for the moves that are coming in the offseason, and we're going to dive into the voicemail right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans, welcome to the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host here, Hayes. Thank you for joining me. And so the Chicago Bulls have a matchup against the Brooklyn Nets tonight. And this is a team that, you know, since trading their stars away, have, they're still a deep, scrappy, young team that plays hard on both sides of the ball. And, you know, that was a, a way that I wish I was using to describe our team. But this team comes in. And they have to, or they're going there, we're going to Brooklyn, and the, the Bulls are going to have to really try their best to set their tone the best that they can. And, you know, this this last stretch of the season, what we're looking like, uh, wh- how this team looks with the energy and things coming out, that's highly important for this team. Um, this, this has been a team that the energy has been off. For the last 20, 25 games, the body language of this team hasn't been, you know, the best when this team kind of, you know, faces some adversity, you could tell that they get down on themselves. And that's one of the first things that this team is going to have to come in and do or, or take a look at is their energy. How does this Bulls team look now with the addition of Pat Beverly, right? What, how did that bring in a new energy to this team? Has this team used the all-star break to kind of refocus and figure some things out that they need to fix to save their season? The energy that this team comes out with is going to be one of the biggest things that I'm going to look out for in the game tonight. Next up is just, what does the lineup look like? What does the starting lineup look like? Um, Billy Donovan did allude to the fact that, hey, he is open to starting. Pat Bev, it just depends on finding the right matchup for the team. So what, do, what does that starting lineup look like coming into, the, into this game? Does it, are there any changes there? What's the energy and tone that they set the game out with? And then when people, people that we do know is going to be in the game and be a big part of it, the big three. It all starts with what our big three does. The, the balance from them, right? Do they find Vooch in, in the middle when he has a mismatch, right? Does, does Zach and DeMar default back to the heavy isolation ball when things get tough? Do they get their teammates involved, right? When, when the big three get everyone invo- involved and the, and, the, and the ball's moving around there, uh, we are a more dangerous and more difficult team to guard. But again, some of that comes to coaching, right? And so coaching absolutely has to be on this list as well. How, 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 how does Billy Donovan respond? How does Billy Donovan adjust his defensive schemes, right? How does Billy Donovan adjust to things that the other team does that when the Bulls can't really find their shots, using the timeouts correctly, right? Using the challenges, things like that we need to see from this head coach and Billy Donovan. Also, but outside of the big three, Billy Donovan, the role players have to step up. And that means Io. That means Patrick Williams. That means Kobe. That means Pat Bev. That means Caruso. Derrick Jones Jr. is back, right? We have a clear injury report outside of Goran Dragic, who's listed as questionable. And of course, Javante Green and Lonzo Ball are out. So we have our fullest version of healthy basically out there, right? So the role players need to step up, play well within their role. Billy Donovan also has to coach them, right? Use Andre Drummond correctly, right? Things like that. So those are the things that we're going to look at, look at initially coming into this game because that in the broad things, because that's just the things that we have let, we have not seen consistently from this team this whole season, right? And then the defensive attack, right? How does this team come out and game plan against a team that really has people who can put the ball in the bucket all over their lineup, right? No, they don't have the huge number scoring wise, but if you look at Spencer Dinwiddie, right, brother, if it's if it's Patrick Beverly or I would assume we're in that starting lineup. How do they defensively keep Spencer Dinwiddie from going off? Mikael Bridges, we already know. And Zach Levine is going to have to match what, what two-way play we're going to see from Mikael Bridges with his own two-way play. Zach is going to have to shoot the ball efficiently. He's also going to have to be engaged in the game defensively like we've seen him have the ability to do in some games this season. We need that level of defense from Zach Levine in this game because you're facing a player that is going to be trying to give you work on both sides of the ball. You got to respond to that. The Cam Johnson matchup. I, I personally think it's probably going to be Patrick Williams guarding Cam Johnson. I just don't see them putting DeMar on Cam Johnson. You kind of you can kind of hide DeMar's defense on, on, on Finney Smith. So 
I'm guessing that 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 Patrick Williams, Cam Johnson is going to be the matchup there. And like we've called for so much for Patrick Williams this season, win your matchup, make your player that your 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 matchup guard you on on offense while also you playing tough defense on them. Cam Johnson can go off. Dorian Finney Finney Smith, a player that his aggression, like does he and his energy get work the Bulls out of the game? That's probably going to be Demar's matchup. That's going to be a tough one for him. And then Nick Claxton and, and Nikola Vucevic overall. Vooch had some success in our last game against Brooklyn Nets. We just went away from it, right? Can Vooch take advantage and not allow the length of a Nick Claxton to really get him out of his game? If Vooch can play well and get us some extra rebounds, things like that, it always makes the game a little bit easier for the Chicago Bulls. And with that being said, efficient shooting. So much on this last stretch of, of losses for the Chicago Bulls have we had shooting percentages in the 20s, in the 30s. That's not going to cut it. The Bulls need to need to shoot the ball efficiently. Some of that comes to game plan. Some of that comes to taking smart shots, not the shots early in the shot clock, Zach and Demar, and 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 but and hitting your open shots. How many times have we seen a player reluctant to either take an open shot, then makes the shot more difficult, or they pass out of an open shot, hesitate, and then it causes turnovers for the Bulls? You have to shoot the ball efficiently. Take the open shots. Move the ball around. But in moving the ball around and getting everyone involved, keep the turnovers low. Sometimes the Chicago Bulls team suffers from overpassing. And when we overpass, that's usually when we get a bunch of turnovers that allows the team to get easy, easily out in transition, get those easy buckets. The Bulls have shown once a team starts getting out with that type of rhythm, that type of energy, they don't usually have that second gear to go into. So you have to shoot the ball efficiently, but then also take care of the basketball. If you can get the keep the turnovers between 8 and 10, that's usually where the Bulls have their best success. Efficient shooting, playing efficiently and passing the ball efficiently, keeping the turnovers down. If the Bulls can do a combination of those things, do at least two out of those three things right, but ideally you want to execute on those basics. The Bulls can get in games, man. The Bulls can win some of these games on the back half of the season. And, and on top of that, this Brooklyn Nets team is going to go on a run. At some point, they're going to go on a scoring run. We're probably going to go on a scoring drought. Can the Bulls respond well to giving up a run? Or do they get down on themselves again, right? You can't let the runs take you completely out of the game. Otherwise, you're letting it double affect you, right? You're already giving up points. You have to go through your offense even when you're getting up runs. Don't fran it. Don't get, don't, don't get impatient. And then just execute on the defensive side. Just get one stop. Stacey King talks about it so much. You get one stop, and then you get another stop. Take efficient shots, right? The energy from this team overall is probably the biggest thing. And, I, and it may be a lot to ask to say, hey, let's look for in, huge energy changes in this first game back from the All-Star break. But the Bulls have put themselves in this situation. With where they are right now, they have put themselves in this situation with their inability to get wins, especially against sub-500 teams, and to hold on to big leads. These are the things that the Bulls have to stop doing. They have to get, the, that, get those basics fixed. And then we'll see what we can look like on this back half of the season. So in this game tonight, just looking for those things, looking for execution. I want to see the big three play like a big three. I want to see the role players step up, take their shots, play efficiently. And then Billy Donovan has to coach us, man. He has to coach a well-balanced game. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't adjust to things, it's going to be a long night for the Chicago Bulls. But before we go also, I want to talk about how really this last 23 games, the last 23 it's probably going to be one of the more important last stretches of the season because this, this front office, well, if AK and Eversley are truly ready to admit the mistakes that they've made in building this roster, again, nine players under contract, um, well, guarantee players under contract and we're already over the salary cap, there's going to be moves made if for nothing else to free up space to add more players for depth. And so really this last stretch of the season is going to say tell us how much this team really needs to change. A full rebuild is not coming. As much as some people are calling for it, would love to see it and are asking for it, it's probably not coming. So in looking at how they can, they, can, they can retool and rebuild while still developing younger players at the same time, it's a high probability that some of our favorite players are gone. And I actually have a video on that over on the members only part of the channel where I talked about and I gave a reason why every single bull on this roster may not be back next season. I titled it uh, why, it's, why It May Be Time to Say Goodbye to Your Favorite Chicago Bulls Player, but it's real because 
the, this team as constructed didn't work. They didn't hit its goals. And I know I'm saying that prematurely. Could this Bulls team go on a historic run and win a, a first round playoff series? Where do things have happened? Doesn't seem like it's coming, but where do things have happened? But this front off, this roster failed. And if it's if you really want it, the, all the, to give the, the city of Chicago all the things that you said and that we deserve a playoff team, we deserve a team who plays with heart, we deserve to win championships, this roster isn't going to cut it, and it's time to make these changes. And it's really going to be important to, to tell us this offseason how much does AK really fall in love with his own players? Because if, we, if the players that he brought in, if some of them aren't moved, or we see like this movement or lack of movement to, to really improve the roster yet again, it's going to be difficult to really sell anybody on anything going forward. This is a hugely important stretch for the Bulls. Guys know I already said many of times, like nothing that the Bulls can do this season needs to change what needs to happen in the offseason. It can make it more entertaining. It can definitely make this last stretch of games way more entertaining as a watch for Bulls fans, but it doesn't change what AK and Eversley needs to do, um, in my opinion, in this offseason. There's too much that needs to change with this team. Um, and so in this last 23 games, to me, I think we're going to be looking at to see which two of the big three we keep, even if we are, or even if we keep um, two of them, it may just be one of them, right? Which one of these role players are going to have to go to make way for us to add depth to the team? Alex Caruso is great for us, but when you look at Io and then if Lonzo Ball is coming back, like Kobe White, what do you do there? Everything's going to be told to us on this back 23 games of the season and you know, hopefully they're as locked in as what we have been locked in this season. But before we go, I want to play this voicemail from Michael Korn. Um, go ahead. Hey, Hayes. How you doing? This is Michael Korn. Just a few comments. Uh, for One, Lonzo Ball. Hey, Lonzo, if you're following Hayes, don't listen to your doctors. Get on the fuck, excuse me, get on the beach and walk five hours a day barefoot. You'll be surprised how strong the cartilage in your knee is going to feel after that, man. Anyway, uh, second, Dalen Terry. I'd love to see his game develop. Uh, I hope on the off season he's shooting a uh, thousand shots a day. Just keep shooting. Uh, hopefully, there's a you know someone uh, like who really is a good shooting coach who could say you may want to do this, whatever. He should just be out there shooting. Um, and then Patrick Beverly. Honestly, I'm uh, I'm down with the signing. I think it's great. Uh, I'd love to see him be a, uh, a full care in Chicago. Love to see the Bulls turn it around. I don't want to see them tanking, uh, you know, uh, you know, percentage wise if they're even closer to a uh, top pick versus the play in whatever. I want, to, I want to see them win, and hopefully uh, Patrick Beverly in there will stop the bleeding, uh, which is the you know first objective. So, hey, go Bulls. Uh, love the show. Uh, waiting for the next game, whenever that, uh, I guess, in what, four days, something like that. Hey, thanks. Bye-bye. Michael Korn hitting on some great points, as always. Um, here's what I'll say with that is, uh, yeah, Dale and Terry's game needs to grow huge. I, I think that, you know, getting to see Dale, Dale and Terry's game evolve and grow, um, hopefully like we will, especially looking at the flashes we've seen this season. And then if he comes in and plays a a, be, a higher role in the rotation next season, as I think we all hope for, it's going to be fun to see the growth. Like just in the games that he's played for meaningful minutes, you've seen him make adjustments and growth just in that, what, three or four game stretch. So like to be able to see a whole season of Dalen Terry kind of working through his things, that's going to be fun to see. And I, and I hope, and I can't wait to see the growth. Now, as far as Patrick Beverly, I'm, Again, I understand why they did it. It sucks that you're still looking to add to your identity at the buyout market yet again, but the, you could have done a lot worse as a player, right? And I, and I like what he's bringing in, not necessarily for the on-the-court stuff, but he is bringing some things that we need, man. And and yes, it's sad to say that we need that, but I, I do look at that and say, hey, I'm, I'm, ha I'm happy on Patrick Beverly being here. And if it changes the Bulls' energy for this back half of the season, if it helps give the Bulls kind of a new edge that they've been lacking, I can't be mad at it at all. It's, it's at that point, it's a plus acquisition. So we'll see. Uh, we'll continue to watch that and see where, where it goes. But, you know, this next 23 games, I'm going to give you guys some of the best content that I can, and we'll see how it shakes out for this team if we're talking postseason Bulls basketball or not. But for me, that's it for today. Make sure you follow the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, 
bullcentralpodgmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. It's also game day. So be tuned in for our pregame, halftime hangout, and postgame shows all live on the channel tonight. Uh, but like I liked in every episode on, love you guys. Go Bulls. See Red. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Break Break Media. Break Media. Media.